calling, the use of decoys, pinpointing the best locations, and more. Joining us is Fred Eichler of Predator Nation on Sportsman Channel and Jeff Nimnick of Coyote Craze. It's presented by Outdoor Channel, Sportsman Channel, World Fishing Network, and My Outdoor TV. Saturday mornings at 11 on 1420 NBC Sports Radio Tri-Cities. We're seeing cloudy skies and rain showers today along with a high temperature of 64 and a low of 27. Tomorrow will be another day of cloudy skies. It's also going to be chilly out with a high of 29 and a low of 14, so be sure to layer up. Mostly sunny skies are in the forecast for Sunday along with a high of 31 and a low of 20. We'll see a good bit of sunshine on Monday as well. Mostly sunny skies are expected with a high of 43 and a low of 24. Be ready for a cold Tuesday. We'll see partly cloudy skies along with freezing temperatures. The temperature will reach a high of only 27 and will drop to a low of 7 degrees. This is Mason South for the News 103.9, Live Wire Weather Center. Count on it. In Irwin, it's cloudy and 63. In Greenville, we have scattered showers and it's 60. In Johnson City, it's cloudy and 65. Jet Broadcasting Incorporated with news, Livewire 103.9, NBC Sports Tri-Cities, and True Design Company are now hiring experienced radio sales and staff. Who wouldn't want to sell for the two most listened to radio formats in the United States? And with me and Kevin. Get on the jet to success. Contact us at 735-7888. Jet Broadcasting Incorporated is an equal opportunity employer. And there you have it. As if you heard the uh, little segment right there. Coming back here. I forgot the bumper music on this. As a matter of fact, we had it all lined up. But anyway... This came out here. We're gonna play that. We're gonna play this here coming in here. Say, but to tell you the truth, the automatic stop didn't go. <laughs> so that uh, promo that you just heard, that job advertisement. Yeah, we're looking for salespeople. So please come in four two three seven four three six one two three. I. I'm talking to a lot of sale, uh, potential sponsors, so I'm looking forward to that. Hey, uh, last night I also covered the East Tennessee State Buccaneers 10-point victory against Greensboro, the team that I thought, or UNCG. They're now officially, just like ETSU wants to be ETSU, UNCG wants to be UNCG. They're no longer North Carolina Greensboro, no longer Greensboro, it's not like Chattanooga, which used to go by UTC. It's getting tough for me to remember. I cannot remember Chattanooga. They were the moccasins. Now they're the mocks. What is a mock? I mock the mocks. I don't mock the Spartans, though, because they've got the best player in the Southern Conference. His name, as you know, is Francis Alonzo. And he, despite averaging 18.4 points per game coming into the ETSU game last night, he only got 10. Only made four field goals. Nothing from the line. Held in check totally by Jermaine Long. And it was impressive. It was very impressive, as a matter of fact. The circumstance comes out like this. Uh, ETSU back and forth ball game. Play a lot of zone. Both teams pretty much in the zone. The key for ETSU, they wanted to make Alonzo shoot from the left-hand side of the court instead of the right. And they feel that Alonzo is best when he's shooting from the right. And he is. And if he gets open, he's, I don't want to say 100%, but he's deadly. And if Alonzo even has a late hand in his face, if he has a view of the basket, if he has the slightest opening, right side of the court, he's probably going to bury the shot. ETSU, because of Jermaine Long staying on him, did not allow Francis Alonzo, the man who made me pick the Spartans to win the SoCon in the media poll this year, held him in check. Now, 
Early in the second half, Alonzo did get a couple of field goals from the right side on an 8-0 Spartans run. The only two he got all day. UNCG is up by five points, 37-32. It's frankly the most competitive game ETSU has played since they took on Xavier, held a 22-point advantage, and somehow found a way to lose the nation's number 10 team. But that's their only loss of the last dozen games. And a 22-6 run followed with a lot of full-court pressure. Meanwhile, Greensboro kept trying to trap the guards of ETSU, and you know what? They continually, it seemed like, I'm going to leap, I'm going to find that open man now that they're double-teaming me. It seemed like he always made the shot. Coaches, they'll complain about free throw shooting. Neither team shot particularly well from the charity stripe. Greensboro, I'm still calling them by their old name. UNCG, they didn't necessarily shoot that well from the field either. Only 33%. But man, that was another game in which ETSU and, and UNC Jeep is G is equally deep. That's the thing. UNCG is equally deep to ETSU, who have ten players averaging ten or more minutes a game. Now another Big take is Peter Jerkin. He was a Southern Conference Player of the Week. Led all scorers in the first half for ETSU, at least, with nine points. First half points. And then Steve Forbes decides, you know what? I need a wide body in the paint, and he puts in Armas. He doesn't use that, but, you know, it's Jerkin that's the center, right? He's the transfer from Indiana. He's the seven-footer. He's also kind of a beanpole. Armas, he's much more the wide body. And what happens is that Armas now comes forth. He had four points in the first half, scores nine in the second, same amount that Jerkin had in the first half. And so it's Mladen Armas. I had a metal block on his first name uh, because not a whole lot of people are named Mladen. But Mladen, M-L-A-D-E-N Armas, takes over in the paint in the second half. Remember, I said, I want to see how Jerkin does defensively. No, it was Armas who came on defensively. This is a truly deep team. I would not be surprised if either of these, if these two teams met three times. I mean, obviously, there's another game coming up in Greensboro, but I'm talking about the Southern Conference tournament somewhere. Of course, that's kind of the luck of the draw. But now ETSU is in a first-place tie, well, a half game back, but tied in the loss column with Furman, Devin Sibley and company. Remember, it was UNCG, Furman, and ETSU that tied for the SOCON last year. They could do it again. Wofford will have something to say about that. But this was an impressive victory, and I think as impressive because of the team that they played as you're going to find uh, in this stretch of 11 victories in 12 games. Yes, even more so than beating Georgia Southern. ETSU now, the bracketologists, I've got this, a lot of them have them at an 11 seed. An 11. Consider that the nationally ranked 1991 East Tennessee State Buccaneers had a 10 seed. The one with the 5,000-point scorers. Misters last year. The team that a lot of people thought was the best ever in ETSU history. They got a 10 seed in the tournament. Lost to Iowa. Meanwhile, this team projected for an 11. I always thought that the Fields and Wadud teams of DeChillis and uh, Murray Bartow for a season were underrated. I thought they were something special. I thought they were held in check by Tim Smith making boneheaded, selfish moves at the end of ETSU's uh, NCAA tournament losses to both Wake Forest and Cincinnati, respectively. Never forget, there's 13 seconds left. 
ETSU is down by three, and what does Tim Smith do? Oh, I can drive the lane. It's open here. That's a good point guard, isn't it? But what you have in this case is a team that, in terms of seeding, could be just about the equal of the greatest ETSU team of all time. Most would say. Some might say the 68 team. Some might, you know, Skeeter Swift and go into the Sweet 16. Of course, there were only 23 teams in the NCAAs back then. So, you know, there are some teams that already were in the Sweet 16 just by, you know, look. But uh, this team, they are now, uh, I'm seeing RPI ratings of 80 out of 351, which makes me think how good the other 79 teams must be, to be brutally honest with you, as good as ETSU is playing. And they are being pricked as a 50-50 shot, because the Southern Conference does have strong teams to make the NCAA tournament. It's a top-heavy league. Now, Citadel getting blown out again on a high-scoring game last night, that, you know... VMI comes in next on Saturday afternoon for the Bucks. It'll be a 4 p.m. start. Most people are going to want to watch football. ETSU will likely win going away against the team most people think is the worst in the Southern Conference. Okay. I'm almost now wondering, remember I said ETSU basketball has actually gotten boring because they're winning by so many points. This game, okay, this was a game in which that old adage, basketball, all you got to do is watch your last two minutes, wasn't true this time. Was not true this time. And I'm usually one of those guys that say, yeah, let me see those last two minutes. Let me see what goes on, to, you know, and all this. No, this was one that you had to watch the first 30 minutes, really, to appreciate. Then the last 10 minutes were gravy. But even so, it's looking real good for ETSU right now. Very deep, and here's the scary thing. Jeremy Rodriguez, out for the year. Steve Forbes says, oh yeah, that's my best player. <laughs> that's not all the ETSU news that we have. They have hired a new football coaching staff. And by the way, there's also other football coaching news out there. I'll tell you what it is when we come back on Tri-City Sports Now. Carol's Hometown Furniture.